Hello, my name is Hannah Selter. I'm a perfectly imperfect scribble artist, and today I'm going to be going over all of the materials and supplies that you need to follow along with my video tutorials. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and comment what you want to see video tutorials on in the future. And also, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram right here, so go check me out there. I have a lot of tutorials on those platforms as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is what kind of paper you want to use. Anything that says watercolor paper is going to be perfect. You can also check by the weight of the paper. Here this is 140 pound paper. I wouldn't recommend anything lighter than this. It's pretty thick paper, but honestly it's going to be the best paper to use, especially when you're using a glass pen and watercolor. Both of those can be rough on thinner papers, so this is going to be the way to go. Thicker than this is going to be nicer and you can also get more professional grade of watercolor paper. Generally, the more you pay, the nicer it will be. So if you're new to watercolor and you don't want to invest a ton into learning how to use watercolor, I would recommend this as a starter watercolor set. It is from Michaels. The brand is Artist Loft and it is just a pan set of watercolors. Comes with 36 different colors. They do have kits with fewer colors. Um, I do think this one is a great beginner watercolor set. It costs about $5. If you are wanting to upgrade a little bit from your basic pan watercolors and get some more professional grade watercolors, I do have a couple options that I would recommend. So the first watercolors that I started using after pan watercolors are these Cotman watercolors. These are actually a really old brand of Cotman watercolors. They were my grandpa's, I'm pretty sure. So they won't, don't actually look like this anymore. Uh, they look like this and these cost like six dollars a tube or something like that at Michaels they're not super expensive and obviously they last a long time because you have this whole tube and you squeeze out just a little bit and mix it with your water so this is a good brand to upgrade to if you're wanting to try out a little bit higher level of watercolors I also use a lot of the Academy brand um, also is at Michaels and I'm sure you can get them at many of the other craft stores. This is a good brand. It's um, less than $10 a tube also I believe. And if you want to really step it up and get some professional level watercolors, these are the ones that I currently use. These are the ones that I currently use. It, they're Daniel Smith and they come in a little bit smaller tubes and these are I think anywhere between $20 to $40 a tube. So they are a lot more expensive but again when you pay for the more expensive watercolors the quality is just incredible. So if you're looking to upgrade to some more professional watercolors these are the ones that I personally like to use. If you are looking to just dabble in uh, tube watercolors without being super serious in them, Arteza is a good very beginner brand for tube watercolors. These are super thick, very pigmented, and I personally don't enjoy using them as much, um, but they are really good for practicing and just working on sketches and things in your sketchbook. I think I got a set of 72 of these for under $40, so you can get a whole bunch of colors, and it's a really good way to broaden your um, scope of art supplies that you have without putting too much of a financial commitment to them. Next we're going to talk about the pen that I use. I obviously use a glass dip pen in all of my tutorials. It is not required. There are some other options that you can use instead of this glass dip pen and ink. So I will just go over some things real quick. This is a Posca marker. These are a good alternative if you don't have a glass dip pen or any kind of ink pen. Um, they're super pigmented. They're essentially paint, so they work really well to lay over the watercolor, and these cost about $6, so it's not too much of a financial commitment. You could also use a fine tip Sharpie or something else of the sort. However, should you decide you want to purchase a glass pen from me, you get it in a kit with a whole bunch of other fun goodies. You get a little instruction sheet with a QR code that leads you to a secret tutorial that only glass pen owners get um, and it's all linked on here in this QR code it tells you where to get more ink and everything that you need to know you get your glass pen all of my pen kits come with a couple fun little mini stickers a jar of beginner ink and a little pen rest to set your pen on while you are drawing and the whole kit costs $20 the link is in my bio if you're interested in purchasing a glass pen to follow along my tutorials with so if you have a glass pen kit, you know that it comes with this little starter sampler of ink. This is Handy Art Waterproof Velvet India ink that comes with the kit. 
Once you are out of this ink, if you're looking to upgrade to a nicer ink, this is the one that I would recommend. This is my Ride or Die, my go-to ink. It is Black Star Waterproof India ink, and it's the matte shade, but you can really do, you could do the gloss if you want to. I just really prefer the matte. What I specifically like about this bottle is the glass pen rests perfectly in the top. As you can see here, it sort of acts as a little glass pen stand in its own right for your pen to sit in and you can just leave it there. You don't have to be touching it at all. See my hands over here. And it will just sit nice and steady like that. If you are looking to invest in some colored inks, make sure you go with the Bombay colored inks. It's the same brand as the black ink that I use, but the Bombay ink is going to work much better with a glass pen than the calligraphy ink. There is some options at the store. Same brand, they just are labeled calligraphy ink and they are not going to work as well with the pen. So if you want to branch out and get some colored inks, make sure you get the Bombay line and it says it's India ink and it will work perfectly fine. Lastly, let's talk about paintbrushes. So you can obviously use the paintbrush that comes with your watercolor palette, but if you're looking to upgrade to a nicer, higher quality paintbrush, I would recommend this one. It is the Richeson Professional 7000, and it's a number eight brush. Um, I'm not exactly sure where you would buy it from. I honestly got it from my bookstore uh, in college. It was required for one of my painting classes early on and I have been using this brush ever since. I absolutely love it. It's an amazing brush and it works beautifully with watercolor. So this is the brush that I use. Richardson Professional 7000 number 8 brush. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned some things and are now fully prepared to follow me on my YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and all the tutorials for all the goods. Don't forget to tag me on Instagram or wherever you post them. I would love to see everything that you come up with. And comment what you want to see a video tutorial on in the future. Subscribe, like this video, and I will see you next week.